What's going on guys? Welcome to Everything Always. My name is Michael Remen, aka All Fires. Now, if there were any questions left whether or not Marvel Studios would actually press forward with the release of the Marvels amidst the actor strike, those questions have all been put to rest. We just got the countdown official promo days ago. It's definitely coming out in November. And now that we know that its release is imminent, we need to go ahead and talk about this most recent anonymous post to 4chan. Not really a leak for the post credit scenes because they've been so ubiquitously talked about, but really just rather a near of everything that's been revealed and now that we know so much more about what's going on due to the multiverse saga the plot leaks and rumors for Deadpool 3 and the upcoming Loki season 2 we can really recontextualize those details so we're going to go ahead for those of you who haven't heard it issue the lightest of spoiler warnings read through it in full the latest reveals for the post credit scenes for the Marvels and then talk about it through the lens of the other details we now know Marvel Studios is setting up leading into Secret Wars we're breaking it all down the post credit scenes for the Marvels but first if you could grab the subscribe button we do daily marvel content at the channel and that's all we do everything from official easter egg breakdowns trailers and reviews to the occasional industry insider report and everything in between so if that sort of thing's for you hit the subscribe button leave a comment down below that will automatically enter you to win our ongoing ps5 giveaway the next one is right around the corner to coincide with loki's release again all you got to do be a sub Leave a comment on this video if you want, stick around to the end of the video, we get into all the giveaway stuff again there. Okay, so first up, the normal spoiler warning as is customary at the channel when we cover this kind of content, guys. We have not covered the post credit scene for the Marvels here at the channel yet, but it's already been discussed in at length on other channels, publications, and editorials. The stuff has been out there for quite some time. However, if you've made it this far, we're only about two months from the film, and if you want to go into the unknown not knowing, now would be the time to back out. The other side of the spoiler warning is, of course, these details about the post credit scene are going to relate to the end of the film and things that took place during the Marvels again and if this is in any way stuff you don't want to know now would be the time to back out you have been warned the first mid credit scene is said to be Monica Rambeau waking up in a universe an alternate universe other than the 616 where Maria Rambeau is not only alive, but also is that universe's Captain Marvel. Now, at the risk of going too far, I actually think there is a ton we can infer about this for the setup for Marvel Secret Wars, but let's just start at the beginning. Number one, we've seen Maria Rambo as a version of Captain Marvel once before during the MCU film Multiverse of Madness, where she was on the Illuminati Council in the 838. Now granted, most of the Illuminati perished at the hands of Wanda, but I would argue that Baron Mordo probably has the Time Stone, considering they already defeated Thanos, and we've already seen during our MCU, it's canon, the Time Stone can absolutely revive people. We also knew there was an attention by Michael Waldron. One of the original deleted post credit scenes for Multiverse of Madness would have been video footage of Wanda attacking the Illuminati Baxter building, but then Mr. Fantastic's hand stretching into frame to replay the footage. Basically, Basically revealing that he had survived regardless of what we saw during those events. Now that's a reveal that Marvel Studios may not have wanted to give up yet and yes it is an infinite multiverse where this can just be a separate universe say 798 where Maria is also Captain Marvel. There could be lots of universes where she's Captain Marvel but I would argue it may be much simpler than this because we already know Doctor Strange and from the 616 our timeline and universe interacted with the 838 in quite a major way and left a huge footprint print there. I think that indelibly ties our two dimensions or universes during a time of destabilization in the multiverse, which again would make the explainer much simpler if someone like Darben, who is argued now to be going around collecting all of the resources from other home worlds, is making it so that an incursion can happen, well, then of course the most likely universe would be the one we're closest to, and that would be the 838, given what we saw during Multiverse of Madness. Now, of course, it doesn't have to be all that deep, and maybe I've got it completely wrong. There are some other factual things that will happen as a consequence of this. Number one, she'll get to reunite with her mom, and at some point we're going to get to see Monica and Maria Rambo fighting side by side during Secret Wars. That's going to be awesome. The other one is that R616 Monica is now stuck in some other dimension, and given what we've learned during Multiverse of Madness, that is destabilizing in and of itself. You have to imagine they're going to be working on trying to get her back, and I have a theory about how that ties into a separate other upcoming film where we've heard we may be getting a superhero team from another dimension entering ours. Now, the second post credit scene indicates that Miss Marvel goes ahead and steals one of the iPads containing all the data on Earth 
from Nick Fury about emerging superhumans, one of which being Kate Bishop. She approaches her about putting back together the Avengers and then mentions that Ant-Man has a daughter. Obviously, this is a Young Avengers setup, but we've already heard from top brass at Marvel Studios that the Young Avengers do not have their own franchise in development. I've often wondered if they'll just show up during Secret Wars as yet another Avengers team. Just add them to the pile of teams that we're going to have by the time we get to that point. But I also wonder just how many movies and films enough runway do they have to set up those characters? As I've speculated here recently, Marvel Studios really needs to focus in on the characters we're supposed to follow through the rest of this saga and really needs to be careful to not stay as spread thin as we were during Marvel Phase 4. Yeah, it was awesome to go as wide as they did and keep introducing characters, but they sort of have to make good on that now. If we don't see Hercules at any single point between the end post credit scene of Love and Thunder and then when he shows up in Secret Wars, the character is not going to matter. And while the obvious answer is, we'll just make sure you work him into a film between now and then, just how many characters can they do that for? When there were basically new introductions during every single Disney Plus show and a new character in every post credit scene of a film with no tie-in. So I think that there is a lot of potential for these characters and teams, but I am so desperate for them to narrow it down so that we know what we're doing and who we're following through this. Perhaps a Young Avengers TV show would make a lot of sense given where the origins for these characters have been. Perhaps the rumored Miss Marvel season two can be that lead up and focus to the Young Avengers, considering we'll see some of those other characters on Disney Plus projects like the upcoming Agatha Coven of Chaos or Darkhold Diaries or whatever it's named for now. Those sort of lead-ins would make sense. Maybe all of the shows come together, the upcoming Vision Quest with his daughter Viv, that's where it's all leading, but hopefully Marvel Studios really starts to put it together in a way that makes sense and tying these characters together instead of just showing up new at the end of post credit scenes. Speaking of which, I know there was a rumor out there and for quite some time, based on the fact that Galactus may be the villain in Fantastic Four, that we were going to get a Galactus cameo during the post credit scene of the Marvels. And while I would not get my hopes up for that, it definitely would be much more in line with what Marvel's been doing recently, just dropping new characters in at the end. And if you're wondering, well, how and why would that even have fit into the story? Again, it ties into my theory about where Monica may have actually ended up by the end of the film, a topic for a different video, and maybe something that you guys have figured out based on what I said during this video. But as always, guys, let me know all your thoughts down below in the comments. I'm all ears. Quickly, let's get into the giveaway stuff before I let you go. All right, we are still giving away PlayStations at the channel. We've got three more giveaways this year, the Marvels, What If, and Loki. We've also got a comic book giveaway that we're gonna do during October. If you wanna be entered to win, it's super simple. All you gotta do, hit the subscribe button, then leave a comment down below. And because it's truly random, the more videos you comment on, the better chance you have of winning. All winners will be announced at the end of videos, the same way we're doing here. The best way to keep up with the content has always been to hit the notification bell with all notifications turned on. And as always, if you like today's video, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit the like button. My name is Michael Roman. You can find me in a couple of places, Instagram and Twitter at I'm Fires. You can also find me on Spotify, YouTube, Amazon, Apple, iTunes, wherever you listen to original music under the name All Fires. And while I sincerely appreciate you checking my music out, thanks for checking this channel out. Stick around. We'll be posting again real, real soon.